Hello and welcome to DTWG the prep welcome. Okay, so in today's video, we're going to be taking equations what problems. Okay, and this is one, all right? I don't want to combine them. Okay, I have about, um, this is six and another six questions, okay? But you know, this is like an intro to equations what problem. Why the, the second video, equation what problems two, is quite advanced. In that video, you'll see you know, questions like um, when George was this age now, in 10 years time, you know, those kind of advanced questions and uh, like um, consecutive, if you have the sum of social consecutive numbers are this, how do you find one number? Okay, so these are some, those are some questions you can get in your GED under equations, what problem? And um, so that will be the second part. This is the first part, like an intro. How do you solve equations, word problems? I have done a video to this. Please do watch that video. That's word problems, interpreting algebraic statements into, uh, you know, uh, uh, mathematical words into algebraic statements. Okay. So please watch that video. It will also help you here. All right. So when you see something like four times, you know what I mean? Add, decrease, you know, those particular statements, you know how to represent them mathematically. All right, so before we get on to solving these questions here, please, please do kindly subscribe to this YouTube channel. Please help us grow. Give this video a thumbs up and um, you know, click um, on the notification bell so you're instantly notified whenever we upload a, an educational video for you. And also please try to visit our website for summary notes, free summary notes on social studies, um, sciences, um, you know, practice questions, your GD formula sheet to download. And you will get all this in the website here, dtwgdprep.com. Okay. And also you can join our Facebook group. We're over 22,000 members there. All right. So, you know, you need to motivation, resources, as you embark in your GED journey, you need to know about the GED in whichever state you are in the US, you can join the group, ask your questions, you know, if you want to know more about the online GED, ask your questions there. I'll leave all the links in the video description box of this video. All right, now for question number one, it says four times a certain number, four times a certain number. So as I explained in the first video, in interpreting all these words, you have to follow them statement by statement, okay? So this says four times, times means multiplication. So that's four times a certain number. Now this number is unknown. You can make, anyway, the, the question asked you actually has stated that we should let X represent the unknown. So the certain number should be X. So that's four times X added, that's plus two seven. All right, do you see that? We have we have we have interpreted this statement now. So it is four times s, which is four x, then plus seven. You see, is equal. Equal means equal to three times the number. So the number is still x. So three times x decreased, which is what you are going to subtract, decreased by five. Do you see that? So it says let x represent the unknown number. Which of the following equations could be used to find the value of x? So we know the first one. So it says 4x plus 7 is equal to, so equal to 3 times x, which is 3x, decreased by 5, minus 5. So this is the equation that we should use. And where is it in the option? That's option C. Okay, so the answer to this is option C. Now, look at this question. It says the Tigers won 3 three times the tigers won three times as many games as they lost hmm. won three times as many games as they lost so there are two terms here okay won and lost all right let us represent one as w lost as what l all right so it says the tigers won three times as many games as they lost three times as many games as they lost. That's one is equal to three times L. That's three times as many games as they lost. So three times as they lost. So L, because we don't know the how many games they lost. We don't know how many games they won. All right. So this is our first expression. 
this is our first equation. So W is equal to this. It says if they played a total of 44 games, how many did they win? So if they played a total of 44 games, so meaning that in 44 games, uh, they lost and also they won, right? So this statement here, if they played a total of 44 games, means their, win, their wins plus their losses is equal to 44. So it, the question says, how many did they win? So we now have to find W. Win is W, right? Okay, so this is our first equation. This is our second word equation. Now, we have to now look for how to solve for a variable. All right, if we know that W is equal to 3L, we can easily put this into here. All right, you know, for in equations, we only solve, that's for linear equations. All right, even quadratic equations is actually one variable. All right, so for equations, we always look for a variable. All right, you can see here in this last final equation, all right, which um, combines the two, we have two variables, W and L. But we need to make them one variable. All right, so we can easily substitute since we know that W is equal to 3L from this first statement. Wherever W is in this second equation, let us put 3L. Are you with me? We can do it. We can do it vice versa. Are you with me? Are you, are you with me? We can do it vice versa in the sense that we can make here. Let me not go that route, but you can try that on your own. All right, but let me let me say it. Okay, so it says that you can make L like the subject here. In this part, W is the subject because it stands alone. It's the subject of this equation because it stands alone. So in this equation, if we want to do it the other way, okay, we can make L to be the subject. That's make L stand alone. And to do that, you take W to this side. L stands alone, then you put since L is equal to, but you know, if we bring uh, W here, it becomes minus W. Okay, so we put in which in every in every way W uh, L is, we put 44 minus W. Are you with me? And we solve for W. Okay, you know what? We're going to do it both ways so you understand what I'm saying. And you see that we'll arrive, we'll arrive at the same answer. All right, so. The first way is wherever W is in this equation, let us put 3L. So here we have W. So we do 3L plus L equal to 44. So you can see why in a one variable, we have one variable. So it's easy for us to solve. So we do 3L plus L. It gives us what? 4L equal to 44. So to get L, what, what, what do we do? We divide both sides by 4. Okay, and this cancels out. Uh, L forty four divided by four is eleven. Do we see that? Okay, so since we've gotten L as eleven, so it means they lost what eleven games. How do you now find out how many games they won? All the simply you need to just go back to this same equation where W is equal to three L. So all you need to do is just do three. Since we've gotten our value for L, we do three times L. And this gives us what? 33. So they won 33 games and lost 11 games. And we can test our answer if we are correct. If we add 33 plus 11, we are going to get what? 44. So we are correct. So how many games did they win? They, win, they won what? Three, 33 games do you see that okay now uh i i know you, in your mind you want me to go the other way to see if if it's going to also be correct okay so if we do it this way we do uh so we make l the subject of formula here so it gives us l is equal to 44 minus w so here what we do is 
we now say W is equal to, so we put L here. So W is equal to 33 in parentheses, 44 minus W. Okay, so what do we do? We have to, we have to open parentheses. So that will be three times 44. Okay, that's 132. Then three times negative this, that gives us what? Negative 3W. We have W here. So let's take a negative 3W here. So it becomes W plus, taking a negative here becomes a positive 3W equal to 132. So W plus uh, 3W gives us, let me come down here, gives us 4W equal to 132. So to get... To get a W, we divide by 4, divide by 4, this cancels, and W is equal to 33. Do you see that? So, it depends on which way you want to. As far as you have your two equations, all right, this is your first equation, this is your second equation. As far as you represent them correctly, okay, you've interpreted them correctly, <clears throat> you can go whichever way. Okay, you can, in maths, it's called, you can manipulate whichever way. You can make one subject of the formula, then take that into the next equation to, you know, um, you know, to find the value of that particular, of a variable. So it depends on which way you want to go. Okay, so I hope you understand that clearly. Don't worry, we have more questions here. So now, I'm going to quickly clear the screen. So now, we have number three. It says here, Jerry got two parking tickets, all right? The fine for the second ticket was $7 less than twice the fine for the first ticket. If the fines total $85, which equation could be used to find the amount of the first fine, all right? So Jerry got two parking tickets. So let's say F is for first, S is for second, right? It now says the fine for the second, so second ticket was that second ticket is equal to, that's what the statement means now, $7 less than twice the fine for the first ticket. So $7, remember the statement I taught it in that first algebraic um, interpreting word, word, um, what math word problem okay seven less than twice the fine of the first ticket it means uh so with twice the fine of the first ticket that's two times f right first ticket we've represented first ticket as f so that's two times f then seven dollars less this that's minus seven we see that okay now it says if the fines total 85 dollars so if the fines the two fines that is f plus s equal to 85 which equ which equation could be used to find the amount of the first fine okay so we're looking for the first fine so we're looking for f right so s what does s represent this is the value for s because it says the fine for the second ticket was this. So this is what we represented for S. So S is what? 2F minus 7. So all you need to do is do F, put the value of S, which is plus in parentheses, 2F minus 7 equal to 85. So this equation we are going to use to find the amount for the first fine, which is F. Okay? So here now, we can now open parentheses and solve, all right? But here, um, the question says which equation? So it's not asking us to solve for the value. So this will be the option. You will see an equation in op option just like this. Okay, so this is our answer for this. Now, let's go to number four, all right? Follow me, all right? And you can always replay the video if you don't understand. And you can also comment in the comment section to ask your questions. If you want me to treat more questions like this, let me know. All right. And number four says, at a toy store, action figures cost $5 each and ball games cost $8 each. If Sarah bought a total of 10 items and paid $62, how many action figures did she buy? Wow. 
is going to be a long question. Now, action figures cost $5 each. So let's put A for action figures and B for board games. Okay, we just pick a letter. You can pick any variable you want, but I always prefer go closer to, you know, the statement A for action, B for board games. Okay, so uh, action figures, one is what, $5? Board games, one cost what $8. Okay. If Sarah bought a total of 10 items, all right. So the 10 items include action figures and board game, but we don't know how many is the action figures. We don't know how many is the board game. So it means here A plus B is equal to 10. All right. So this unknown and this unknown is 10. Okay. But we don't know how many. We don't know how many. But we know that the total, both of them, will give us 10 items. All right. That's one equation you set, you have there. Now, it now says, I'm paid $62. Okay. So she paid a total of $62 for the items, for the 10 items. So it means uh, A says, you know, this now is, in, is cost. Since we know the cost for A. So it means $5 times A plus $8 times B will give us a total of what, $62, okay? We don't know how many A, um, actual figures. We don't know how many board games, but we know the price of action figure. We know the price of board games. So five times A plus eight times B will give us 62. Okay, the total, we know that this is the total amount she paid for board games and and uh, action figures and board games. We know the question has given us the price of one action figure. It has also given us the price of one games, of one uh, board game. Are you with me? So five times A, whichever amount of board games that she have, we don't know the amount is unknown. That's why it is A. So five times A and eight. That's a, a price of a board game times B, which we don't know how many, should give us 62. Are you with me? So this is our second what equation. Now we have to solve. We know that A plus B is equal to 10. So it depends on what we want to, um, you know, uh, make as uh, the variable here, what we want to impute. So I can come here. It's always work from the easier part so let us make a the subject here and put the value of a into this equation so we can solve for b okay that's the board games or better still since we're looking for action figures let's just go straight to the point all right let's make b the subject of formula here so that when we come here put the value of b we will solve for a so making b subject of formula here we take a to this side. So it becomes what? Let me write it here. It becomes B is equal to 10 minus A. Are you with me? So wherever B is in the second equation, put 10 minus A. So we have it here. So we have here 5A plus 8B is here. So we put 10 minus A equal to 62. So we now solve. Okay. So we do 5a plus 8 times uh, 10 is 80. 8 times uh, minus a is minus 8a equal to 62. Okay, so we take 80 to this side. We are left here with 5a minus 8a equal to 62 minus 80. Are you with me? I hope you're following me. Do you want me to take a break? Do you want us to take a break? Uh, do you want us to take a break? <laughs> Just don't worry. You're going to get it, okay? Yeah. We now have 5A minus 8A. What would that give us? That would give us a negative 3 a. Okay, and what is negative and 
what is this is 62 minus 80 what would that give us okay so we're going to subtract because this is a positive 62 negative 80 okay so we're going to what subtract all right so that's 80 minus 12 all right and uh, minus 2 so we have to borrow a 1 so that will give us 8 we have a 7 uh remainder of 7 so 7 minus 6 that will give us a 1 all right so from here and the sign will take a negative so to get our a what do we do we divide both sides by negative 3 right so we do negative 3 a over a negative 3 equal to a negative 18 divided by a negative 3 so from here what do we do this cancels out we have a is equal to this sign cancels this sign 18 divided by 3 would give us what 6 so our answer is 6 and this is what option a do you see that okay if you re if you still want me to do one more uh more questions on this let me know i will be happy just comment in the comment section all right so this is the solution to this so you can see the steps two equations substitute one make one make uh, a subject of formula substitute into the other to get what this and you can always confirm your answer now let's confirm our answer okay so from here now it means if a is six so it means from here b will be equal to 10 minus six which is what four so b is what four right so now let us test if we put in the value of a as six and b as four if it will give us 62 let us test that so a is six so eight five times six plus eight eight is uh b is four that's eight times four let us see if it will give us 62 so what's five times six that's 30 plus what is um eight times uh four that will give us 32 and when we add this we get what 62 so we are correct okay so this is the way to confirm also that your answer is correct so you can see this equation is correct okay now let's move on to our next question now let's go to question five it says at the team park two adults and five children paid 75 dollars for admission so two adults that's 2a and plus five children that's 5c i'll make children c paid what equal to what 75 dollars this is our first equation do you see that 2a plus 5c equal to 75 dollars i can write let me write it here properly okay all right so this is equation one now for admission a child's ticket is six dollars less than an adult's ticket a child that is c is six dollars less than so if an adult ticket an adult ticket is a okay child's ticket is six dollars less than a that's minus six so this is our second equation now it says what is the cost of an adult's ticket so we're looking for the cost of an adult's ticket okay do you see that we're looking for the cost of an adult's ticket so how do we solve this okay all we need to do is wherever we see c in our first equation let us put a minus six that helps us solve for a okay because a represents adults so from here let me come down here so we have two a plus five we have c here so put a minus six so in parentheses a minus six equal to what 75 so we have 2a plus we open up the parentheses 5 positive 5a times uh 5 times a that will give us a positive 5a and positive 5 times a negative 6 that will give us a negative 30 equal to 75 now let's take 30 to this side so we now have here uh 2a plus 5a equal to 75 plus 30 when we cross it changes the sign changes to positive this plus this gives us 7a and what is 75 plus 30 gives us 105 so to get a we divide by 7 divide by 7 this cancels out so our a gives us 105 divided by 7 gives us what 15 so the cost of an adult ticket is what 15 dollars do we see that we can test our answer 
although our option is this, but let's test our answer. So if we know A is 15, all right? So to get C, C is what? 15 minus 6, and that gives us 9, right? So now let us put in these values and see if it will give us 75. So A, A, A oh, so 2 times A, which is 15, plus 5 times 9, which is what? That's 5 times 9, uh, C, which is 9. Okay, so that's times 9. So this times 15 is 30. And what is 5 times 9? This gives us what? 45. When we add this two, we get 75. So our answer is correct. Do we see that? So that's how you test for your answer, if you're not sure. Okay? Now, going to our final question here, that's number six. It says here, Mark has 36 coins in his wallet. The coins are either nickels or dimes. The total value of the coins is $2.70. How many coins are dimes? Okay, very tricky questions. No, now, in this question, you must know what a nickel is and what a dime is. Okay, a nickel, let me just put it as N. A nickel is what, 55 cents, sorry. And a dime is how many cents? A dime, D, is what, 10 cents. Okay, so that's the value, the monetary value. All right, because we have to use this in solving this question. So we know that Mark has 36 coins in his wallet. So that means which are either nickels or dimes. So N plus D is 36, right? That's what the statement means. Mark has 36 coins in his wallet. The coins are either nickels or dimes. So N, the unknown, we don't know how many is N. We don't know how many is dime. But we know that the total coins is what? 36. And we are also giving the total value also as $2.70. So it means that, okay, since we're giving the total uh, value, so we know that nickel, how much does nickel, a uh, nickel cost? Five cents. So five times N plus 10, where a dime is 10 cents, plus 10 times how many value of dimes is all equal. The total value will, will must be equal to this according to our statement here, our question here. So we have five cents times, we don't know how many of the nickels we have, okay? So this will give us the value of the nickel. This will give us the value of the dime. But we know that when we add them together, we should get this, okay? So we need to solve for the unknown, okay? So it's the question is asking us to solve for dimes, okay? So I would prefer here we make n the subject of the formula so that our variable will be solving in the in the dimes variable all right so making n the subject of the formula here that's making n stand alone on one part of the equation we take d to this side so it becomes n is equal to 36 taking a positive d to this side becomes 36 minus d so wherever we see n this is our first equation this is our second equation. Wherever we see n in the second equation, we are going to put 36 minus d. All right? So from here, now, we let's, let's come here. So we now have 5 in parentheses, 36 minus d, close the parentheses, plus 10d. Okay, now since you know this is in two dollars seventy cents, since we are working in cents, let us convert this to cent. Converting this to cent is just multiplying by hundred. When you multiply a two point seven zero by hundred, you get a two seventy. Okay, a trick to multiply by hundreds or ten. When you multiply by hundred, you just shift the decimal place twice and it becomes what 270 so we do 270 so it 270 cent so we are working on cent you know in math we always make sure we work on a a, a you know a, a across the board variable all right just like the way now we are solving for d across the board board so the same way if we're in cent your measurement should also be everything here should be in cent. Just like if you're um, working with distance, 
if you're using inches, everything should be inches. All right, you can't have a value here in inches and another value here in miles. All right, it's you're not going to get the right answer. So we should have the same measurements all through. All right, so here we now solve 5 times 36 is going to give us 180 minus 5 times D, that's 5D. Okay, that's 5 times minus D, that's 5D, minus 5D. Then plus 10D equal to 270. So let's take 180 here. So it becomes minus 5D plus 10D equal to 270 minus 180. Okay, so uh, let me bring this up here. Minus 5D plus 10D equal to 270 minus 180. So a negative 5D plus 10D, that will give us a positive 5D, okay? We subtract and we take the positive value. Equal to, what is it? 270 minus 180, we get a 90. So to get D, we divide by 5, divide by 5. This would cancel out. So D is equal to 90 divided by 5 will give us what? 18. Do we see that? So we can now test our answer again. All right. Now here, since we know D as 18, what do we do? We put the value here. So that's N is equal to 36 minus 18. That's going to give us 18. Okay. So do you see that? It gives us what? 18. All right. So now let's put, in the, put it into the second equation. Okay, so the second equation is 5n plus 10d equal to, you know, we've converted this to cent, so it will be 270. So now that's 5 times n. What did we get as n? That's 5 times 18 plus 10 times 18. So what is 5 times 18? That would give us what? 90 plus, what is, um, uh, 10 times 18, that will give us 180. And when we add this up, what are we going to have? 180 plus 90, that's you know, like 7. So we have 270. You can see it is equal to this. So our answer is correct, okay? So we have 18 dimes in his, Mark has 18 dimes in his wallet all right so thank you for staying tuned to the end of this video thank you thank you so much please don't forget to subscribe to our youtube channel and give this video a thumbs up share this video with your friends family and loved ones and um, you can visit our website dtwgdprep.com all right you can visit this website to get more summary notes on your science and social studies our study guides, free practice questions, your GED math formula sheet, you can download it there. And you can also join our Facebook group. If you need one-on-one -on -one tutoring, you can also contact me. Okay, and uh, all the links will be in the video description box of this video. Okay, and finally, please don't forget that Jesus Christ is coming soon. Give your life to Christ, for he is the way, he is the truth, and he is the life. He's the one who's going to lead us to heaven at last. Because after life here, there is another life. So he's the one who's going to give us eternal life in heaven. All right? And he also has the power to make us live heaven on earth. While we're still on earth, he has the power. Everything is in him. Every good thing is in him. Goodness, mercies is in Christ Jesus. Embrace him today and he will give it to you. He would. You know, give you victory over whichever battles you're going through, financial battles, marital battles. Every solution is in Christ Jesus. Come to him and he will give you rest, peace, love, and joy in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Thank you. And um, I wish you success in your forthcoming GED and also in life. You are destined to win. See you in our next video.